What's new since last time, uh, since uh, our last uh, lesson together? Yes, I um, worked for worked. a week. Yes. And I, I started a new, to study a new language of programming. Ah, oh, that's great. Which language uh, was that? Uh, Python. Oh, Python. Oh, Hi. excellent. Yes. Oh, yes. That's a very popular language these days. Yes, exactly. For, uh, for, this, uh, for this reason, I, mm -hmm. I started to study it because it's uh, very popular. Yes, that's uh, excellent. Yes, yes uh, and it's supposed to be quite easy to learn as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. For the beginning, perhaps, then I don't know. So, do you know any other programming languages? Uh, just COBOL. Just COBOL. COBOL, oh yes, that's right. Well, this will be useful because I've heard that um, it's one of the computer languages that is uh, the most, or one of the languages that is most in demand that uh, at the moment, uh, yes. and I think uh, with that, that'll uh, give you a lot of job in opportunities. Uh, I, I hope, Giovanni. I hope. Yes, then, uh, I, I was. Uh, I am studying it on mm -hmm. um, on a, on a, on um, a web course in English. So Excellent. also for the also also for the English. Of course, that's useful for your English as well. So, exactly. in fact, you're learning two things at the same time, both the programming <laughs> and, exactly. and the English language. That's wonderful. You're doing really well there. <laughs> that's a very good idea. And uh, I'm uh, at the moment um, continuing my studies of uh, C Sharp. Uh, are you familiar yeah. with uh, C Sharp? Uh, a little. I saw it uh, two years uh, ago. Oh, yes. Uh, and how did you find it? Uh, what was in your a, impression of it? In, in an industry. Ah. In an industry, in an industry company. Yes. In an industrial company. Yes. And wh what was your impression of it? Uh, how, how did you find it, uh, Giovanni? But uh, I I think it uh, like uh, C plus plus. Oh yes, it is very similar, obviously, to to C plus plus. I think it's quite similar to Java as well. Yes, yes. But uh, it um, is it uh, object oriented? Also? Oh yes. 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 It's uh, very similar in the sense that, as you say, it's object-oriented um, uh, programming. Yes. But uh, why uh, do you study C sharp? Well, it's because I'm uh, very interested in uh, video games. Uh, ah. Yes, I'm also uh, a gamer. Uh, I don't know. Are you a gamer as well, uh, Giovanni? No, no, no. You're not a gamer. Ah. No. But uh, as I, you know, in in the past, I've spent a lot of time actually playing video games. Therefore, as I have a, a good experience of video games, yes. it's an area where I feel I, I could... Um, uh, produce some uh, interesting games uh, once I've done C Sharp, which is good for video games and it's good for the uh, Unity uh, platform. If you've heard of Unity, which is like a development platform uh, using C Sharp. Yes, but uh, mm -hmm. for work or for uh, your hobby? Well, uh, I think it's a little bit of both, really, uh, because, um, you know, I enjoy it uh, on a personal level, of course, uh, and uh, it would be useful, obviously, for work as well. Once um, I'm sufficiently uh, familiar with it, 
Yes. And not only that, but um, from a, a Christian point of view, you know that there isn't all that many Christian video games uh, at the moment that exist. Uh, do you know any uh, Christian no. video games? Uh, no, for you know? example, no. I no. Christian video games, no. What uh, does it mean? <laughs> A Christian video game, you know, a video game that talks about Christianity, that talks about evangelism. But, uh, to learn the uh, Bible, for example. For example, yes, there are video games where you can learn the Bible. For example, questions and answers about the Bible, like a quiz, you see. Interesting. Uh, Interesting, yes, um, in the form of a video game, so it's like a video game quiz. Uh, but also there's lots of other possibilities like adventure games, role-playing games, card games. Uh, but the difference is that mm, instead of it being just um, uh, worldly themes, which um, in the world tends to be monsters and dragons and uh, lots of different yeah. warriors and uh, it tends to be quite violent really i don't know if you've noticed always always yeah violent. oh you've noticed yes of course uh, i think that the most famous are um, uh, war game oh the war games there were so many of them i mean it's amazing yeah, yeah. Uh, but you see with um, christianity it, it's a uh, like a totally different dimension. I mean, because it's not the physical dimension, then obviously we're not talking about uh, physical warfare, but yes. uh, as Christians, we do spiritual warfare. Uh, I don't know. Are you familiar at all with uh, spiritual warfare, uh, Giovanni? Uh, warfare? Uh, I don't uh, understand the ah. word. The word warfare. There we are. I've written it for you in the Skype chat. Uh, it's the art of making war, you see. Ah, okay. So, warfare, it's everything concerning war, you see. Now, obviously, most people are familiar with um, uh, earthly warfare, that is to say, physical warfare. I mean, we've had World War yes. One, we've had World War Two. And now people are talking about uh, the possibility or the probability of World War Three. You see, that's a big subject that people are talking about as well. But yeah. spiritual warfare doesn't use anything physical, you see. Uh, we're not using any physical weapons. Okay. Uh, we're only using spiritual weapons. Uh, do, do you know what the spiritual weapons are, uh, Giovanni? Mm, I don't know. Ma magic. Oh, no, not magic. Well, actually, the enemy uses magic. That's true. Uh, but you see, uh, there is something that's more powerful than the magic of the enemy. And that is... And uh, the, uh, the thing is, that's more powerful than that, is um, or are the miracles, okay? okay? Miracles from God are more powerful than uh, the magic of the enemy. Because obviously God being more powerful than the enemy, yes. uh, because light is more powerful than darkness, because where there is light... Darkness yep. cannot remain. Darkness has to go away as soon as the light shines, you see. So we use uh, uh, spiritual weapons, which are the miracles uh, from God, which uh, defeat uh, all the magic of the enemy. Yep. And um, the miracles, obviously, <coughs> we, we, we have those when we pray. You see, because we use what's called power prayers yes. or <clears throat> prayers of authority, uh, prayers of spiritual warfare. And 
with those prayers, you see, uh, we are combating uh, the enemy. We're combating uh, the powers of the enemy, the magic of the enemy. All the forces of the enemy we, we combat uh, just with um, power prayers. Okay, but these, uh, so these power prayers are in the game. Oh, of course, they will be uh. reflected in the game. That is the whole point, because you see, not many people know about these things. And so the good thing about the game is that uh, we will see um, these power prayers in action and uh, we will see all the spiritual weapons in action. For example, when we call upon the name of Jesus, when we use the name of Jesus, when we say, when we pray in Jesus' name and we have the miracles that happen as a result, uh, also uh, the blood of Jesus that was shed at the cross, you see, because that was such a powerful sacrifice. In fact, it was the most powerful sacrifice. And uh, there is a lot of power in the blood of Jesus that was uh, shed on the cross because it was the blood of Jesus that defeated the enemy. And we can still use, spiritually, of course, um, the blood of Jesus when we invoke it and call it upon uh, the enemies, uh, the spiritual enemies of God. And when we do that, they have to flee. Once again, they cannot stay because they are completely defeated, crushed, overwhelmed uh, by the power of the blood of Jesus. So that's another weapon we use. Yeah. And there is another one. It's the, the word of our testimony. Do you, do you know what that means, uh, Giovanni? No, uh, the word of... Uh, I'll write it in the Skype chat for you. Uh, uh, the word of our testimony. Now, do you know what a testimony is, uh, Giovanni? Testimony. Testimony. Do you know what a witness is when you bear witness? Yes, te but the testimony of what? Well, uh, we are, of course, talking about God and what God has done for us. And so we are testifying. That is the verb, to testify. That is to say, to give testimony and... Uh, uh, by our testimony and the words uh, that we speak uh, in giving our testimony of what God has done for us, that is also a very powerful weapon. It, it actually mentions that in the Bible, because, of course, the Bible is our reference, you know. It's like our, our user manual, you know. It's our uh, user guide uh, for all things uh, that are spiritual, Yes. And in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it says that um, the uh, ancient serpent, uh, that is uh, the accuser of the brethren, okay, so um, that is uh, obviously Satan, the accuser of the brethren, of the brethren, of the brothers, and also known as the devil, the adversary. And the opponent. And uh, so uh, this ancient serpent, which already we see in the Garden of Eden, because it was the snake, the serpent that tempted Adam and Eve, well, tempted yeah. Eve, and then she gave the, the forbidden fruit to, apple, to Adam to eat as well. Now, this ancient serpent was defeated, it says in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, by the blood of the Lamb, that is, of course, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. That's why the, the blood of Jesus is very powerful, yes. uh, spiritually speaking, when we call upon it, when, when we invoke it. And also, the verse continues, and also by the word of our testimony. That's what, that is to say, when we bear witness of what God has done, you see, we say yes. how wonderful God is, how brilliant is it? he is. We give him praise and worship and adoration. We lift him up with our words of testimony. 
then God is glorified. And when God is glorified, obviously, God is very pleased. And yes. as a result, uh, he blesses us. So in whatever situation we're in, he basically takes control of that situation and everything goes well for us. Which okay. means, obviously, that if it goes well for us, it goes badly for the enemy. Because what's good for us is bad for the enemy, just like what's bad for us is good for the enemy, because the enemy wants to do bad things to us, but God only wants to do good things to us. So when things are going well for us, well, the enemy is defeated, is blocked, is unable okay. to harm us or to hurt us because we're, we, we benefit from God's protection in, in that situation. Yes. Do, do you see what I mean, uh, Giovanni? Yes, yes, I, I understand. Did, but, did, uh, yes, yes. But, but, yes, tell me. Mm -hmm. But did this game, yes. uh, where um, can I see this game or... Uh, I download. Uh, is it an app that uh, I download on uh, cell phone, mobile phone, or uh, or what? Well, it's where, it's, where I see. It, it, it's yes. I see what you mean. It's good that you're motivated and that uh, you're interested in um, yes uh, in uh, trying out that game and. <clears throat> uh, uh, if you like, uh, you, you can be one of the first people to try it out, to test it uh, uh, once it has been produced, once uh, I've written it uh, with uh, C-sharp language that I'm learning at the moment. So it doesn't exist yet, uh, oh. as far as I know. I mean, maybe other people have produced a, a, a similar game, but... Um, I haven't really heard of anything uh, similar, but once I, I produce that, then obviously I will let you know and I will uh, send you uh, all the information necessary okay. uh, for you to download it and including uh, a mobile app. That would be good. So you could have it on your mobile phone as well. Yes, I'll have to create a version as well, which is um, not only for the PC computer, but also uh, for the mobile phone. So I have to um, do a version that is uh, maybe uh, mm, that could be downloaded directly from the Google Store. That would be good. Yes, but uh, it's, uh, is it uh, um, all developed? Uh, develop the D develop but the word develop. is uh, develop that's how you pronounce the word develop yes develop um, but uh, okay developed developed develop. that's the past possible yes developed developed uh, just uh, by C sharp or uh, oh no I mean you could use you could even do it in Python I mean some games are written in Python uh, I started actually learning Python uh, when I had the idea of doing this project um, a few months ago. Uh, but finally, I realized that, um, I mean, Python is good for a lot of things. Yes. But there are less games actually programmed in Python because um, there are other languages like C Sharp, which are uh, more popular for producing games simply because, amongst other yeah. things, uh, they are the languages used on uh, game development platforms like um, the Unity engine, uh, the Unreal um, engine and um, lots of other platforms like that. And so uh, that means that uh, it'll be much easier to develop when you're using uh, a software development tool uh, like one of these platforms, like the Unity Engine, which is very popular at the moment. Um, uh, it comes from Microsoft. Uh, it, it's a .NET uh, yeah. architecture and structure. And so uh, it 
uh, enables the program or the, the computer game to be developed very easily, to be modified very easily, and uh, for there to be lots of resources concerning that. And a lot of the courses that I'm actually following at the moment, about half a dozen different uh, courses at the same time, all of them concerning game development, a lot of them actually use uh, the Unity engine and all of them use uh, C Sharp. So for me, my choice for C Sharp was really uh, the popularity of that language for developing uh, video games, if you see what I mean, uh, Giovanni. Yes, I understand. Mm. But uh, you, you could actually do something similar with Python, except um, maybe it might be might not be quite as easy uh, because Python is <clears throat> a little bit more of a general language which can be used for lots of different things. Yes. Whereas uh, C sharp is like almost specifically designed yes, for sir. the Unity engine and for video game development. So it's a much okay. more specialized language in that. For the video game. For okay. the video games, that's right. So I think, therefore, there was more facility and it's much more easy to use a more specialized language in that area rather than a more general language, which is good for everything, but doesn't have any particular extra advantages in the specific area of video game uh, okay. program. Yeah, if you see what I mean. Yes. So ha you hadn't heard of um, this kind of uh, spiritual warfare before, uh, Giovanni? No, no, no. It's uh, the first time. Mm. Oh, yes. That's interesting. That's uh, yes. Uh, I'm sure there must be lots of other people who are in the same situation because um, it's uh, only usually in the deliverance ministry that um, one uh, is familiar with these things, and uh, that's one of the mini mini ministries I exercise by the grace of God, as well as the healing ministry which is quite closely related to the deliverance ministry because um, uh, when you are doing healing, uh, often to, for the healing to take place... Uh, healing, healing, healing. Let, let me write it in the uh, Skype chat for you. Uh, healing, H-E-A-L-I-N-G, from the verb to heal, uh, which also has as a synonym uh, the verb to cure, like okay. a remedy, you see, like medication, medicine. All of those are used, obviously, in healing. But, of course, uh, as this is spiritual, this is a spiritual yeah. ministry, we're not using physical medicine or medication. We're using spiritual uh, treatment, uh, spiritual therapy. And uh, as I was saying before, we're using prayers, okay? Yes, but in this case, there are healing prayers, prayers of healing, um, instead of purely power prayers. Although, as I say, they can be closely linked. I mean, when we see in the ministry of Jesus, which is our, our best example, actually, in this subject area, and we see how Jesus healed a lot of the people who were afflicted by okay. various diseases, infirmities, handicaps, um, deformities, invalidities, and lots of other things that were wrong with them from a health and medical point of view. Uh, Jesus, well. Sorry, what did you say, uh, Giovanni? But spiritual, not, uh, okay. Exactly, but it's all spiritual. Jesus only did spiritual healing. He, he never gave um, uh, some tablets or some uh, um, uh, liquid medication or 
um, an injection. Well, of course, injections didn't exist in those days. But I mean, he never gave any any physical medication. He never gave anything which was medicine, uh, which is something you swallow or you drink or something like that in order to be cured. He just prayed. And... Um, uh, 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 and the miracle of healing happened, took place, you see, uh, as he prayed. Now, in some of the cases, uh, you see some people um, who were demon-possessed, and it was actually uh, the demon that yes. was creating the illness or the infirmity yes. or the disability or whatever it was. And so, uh, when Jesus cast out uh, the demon uh, from the person, Not in the, sorry, Jesus, cast. Jesus cast out. Let me write it for you in the uh, Skype chat. Jesus cast out uh, demons uh, from people who are demon possessed, and uh, immediately after the demon was cast out, the person maybe who was mute, that is to say couldn't speak because uh, he was possessed by uh, what's called a mute spirit, a spirit of mutism which causes the person uh, to be dumb, that is to say uh, to be in a situation where they cannot speak. Uh, then, as soon as the demon went out of the person, the person was able to speak again. Yes. And lots of other um, examples like that, uh, when a person was having like epileptic fits, well, it was the demon causing that. So, when Jesus threw out the demon, cast out the demon... Immediately, the person became healthy again with no more epileptic fits. The person was in perfect health. Yes, <clears throat> yes. I, I think that in the look that mm -hmm. uh, we 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 were uh, mm -hmm. reading in the past uh, lessons, yes. there are uh, a lot of oh examples. yes, a lot of examples in Luke. That's true. That, that is one of the um, books of the Bible, one of the four Gospels, where there are uh, the most uh, miracles, including uh, miracles of healing, miracles of uh, deliverance. Deliverance is when evil spirits are cast out of a person. And lots of other miracles that Jesus performed. So, yes, that, that is a very good book to read, actually, to have more information about uh, spiritual warfare and uh, power prayers and prayers of healing. Yes, that's a very good uh, uh, gospel for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely, uh, Giovanni. Well, we've done about half of our lesson already, and uh, as we were supposed to be doing RLS and RPS, real-life situations and uh, role-playing simulations uh, for this lesson, uh, did you have an idea, a scenario of um, a real-life situation or a role-playing simulation that you would like us to do, Giovanni? Yes, but uh, before, <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. just a, a question of uh, course. On, the, on the Bible. Sure. In the, uh, do you, I think that uh, do you know very well <laughs> the Bible. By, by grace, of course. I thank the Lord for that. <laughs> it's by God's grace. I give all the glory to God in Jesus' name. Yes. In, in, in the book of Revelation. Yes, the book of Revelation. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. do, you, do you know that uh, Jesus get married is it true oh no no uh, uh would you read that in the book of oh i see what you mean <laughs> sorry not whilst he was on earth no i see what you mean yes there is the um, uh, wedding feast um, of the lamb uh, and we are actually the bride of christ the church is a bride of christ and he is the bridegroom now the wedding hasn't taken place yet, and uh, but Revelation being a book of prophecy, 
Yes. It announces in advance the things that are to come in the future. You see? So, yes, uh, uh, whilst Jesus was on earth, of course, he, he never married. Uh, but uh, we, being the church, because the church is not a building, although some people use that name for the building where uh, Christians gather together and have their uh, Christian meetings, but yes. the church is actually the body of Christ, which is to say all of those who are Christians together collectively form what is called the church. So it's the people of God. The church are the people, you see, not the building. And so uh, we are to be like married to Christ. But of course, this is all spiritual. You know, it's not going to be a, a physical wedding, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so the wedding is a spiritual, but uh, yes. in, uh, the meaning is that uh, people um, are, are in Jesus or something That's like that. That's right. I mean, spiritually also, when you are a Christian, when you are born again and you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you pray the sinner's prayer, the prayer of salvation in three steps, recognizing you're a sinner, that's the first step. Second step, you ask forgiveness for um, uh, all the sins you've committed in the past. And the third step is simply to invite Jesus into your heart to be... Yes your Lord and Savior, and to guide you every step of your life. Now, once you've prayed that prayer, then you are saved for everlasting life in heaven. You are born again, and you are already in Jesus, and Jesus is in you. So, okay. spiritually, it's already done. But when uh, Jesus comes back uh, for his church... Uh, that will be the second coming, because he's already come once, 2,000 yes, years ago, yes, and he's yes, going to come yes. again, and we're awaiting this second coming. Then uh, it will be the rapture, and uh, with the rapture, we're going to be uh, meeting Jesus up in the clouds, where he'll be when he comes again, and we'll be joined to him uh, spiritually, of course, but we will have renewed bodies then. We will have spiritual, uh, immortal, incorruptible, uh, glorious, uh, bright shining uh, bodies, not uh, the kind of bodies we have at the moment. And uh, there will be a, a great celebration, the wedding feast of the Lamb, Jesus being the Lamb of God. There'll be a great celebration and the uh, uh, we will then be uh, permanently joined to Jesus in heaven. And uh, it'll be like the relationship of um, a husband and a wife, even though it, it's spiritual. So obviously it won't be exactly like um, the relationship of a husband and wife physically on earth, but it'll be purely spiritual. So, yeah. It'll be in the sense that, uh, just like God says concerning marriage, that okay. uh, in marriage, the, each of the people who are married, they leave their, their fathers and mothers, they leave their family, and they come together to be joined together in holy matru matrimony, as it's called, holy marriage, and when they come together in marriage, then those two people who are being married together, they are no longer two, but they become one. Now, that is a mystery for us, because at the moment on earth physically, uh, two individuals cannot physically join together to become one individual, if you see what I mean. But spiritually, of course, uh, in things that are spiritual, there's no limitation of space, you see. Uh, we can have all of the angels that exist um, at the same time 
on the point of a pin. If you take a needle, the point of a needle, now that's very small. It's less than yeah. one square millimeter. It's a fraction of a millimeter. But because uh, in the spiritual dimension, there is no sense of space, you know, it doesn't take up room. So you could have all of the spiritual beings, that's all of the angels, all in the same place, exactly standing in the same place, almost like one inside another, spiritually speaking, at the same time. And so when two become one, of course, it's spiritual. It means there will be unity. They will be joined together so they are like bonded together. It will be like bond, uh, bonded. Bond, bonded. Do you know the verb to bond? No. Uh, so a bond is like a link, okay, okay. which binds us together. Okay. So that's another verb to bind and to bond. Uh, both are similar, really. And uh, it means to join together in a way that is so strong and so okay. united that um, it's like inseparable. You cannot separate it. That's why God says just after talking about marriage being two people becoming one person, he then says, may no man separate what God has joined together. Okay, I understand. You, you know what I mean. So yeah. we are not to separate what has been joined together because spiritually it cannot be separated. It is inseparable. And it's wonderful because it's something that is long-lasting, forever. It's something concrete, which is solid, something which cannot be taken apart. So... We have that promise from God, that guarantee that um, it's going to last forever. And nothing can come against it. Nothing can separate that. So do you understand a little bit better now, Giovanni, these um, spiritual yes. concepts? Spiritual. Yes, spiritual, yes. not uh, real. Not, not physical, not in not everyday physical. life, not in not real life. Not the wife for Jesus. Oh, no, not, not, not a physical wife for Jesus, no. And that is why, uh, even though Jesus on earth is a man, uh, uh, when you're talking about the church, you're not just talking about women, you're talking about men as well. So obviously, because homosexuality is prohibited in the Bible, then obviously... Um, uh, a man uh, cannot marry another man, yes. physically speaking. But spiritually, in this spiritual union, which is like marriage, in fact, marriage is just uh, the name given to it because um, that is the best illustration, the best image, the best example that can be given because it's the strongest um, relationship, the relationship of marriage, you see. But because it's not physical and only spiritual, that means that even men who are part of the church will be connected, linked and united and joined together with Jesus in this spiritual um, bonding, which is like a marriage, you see. Yeah. And uh, so uh, that's in that sense that, oh, that's why Jesus also says that um, when uh, he was being questioned about what things will be like up in heaven, uh, given the example of um, when the Sadducees, who don't actually believe in 
uh, resurrection. They don't believe in the afterlife. They don't believe in all of these things. They don't even believe in angels. So it's different what the Sadducees believe compared to what the Pharisees believe, because the Pharisees believe everything that's in the Bible. But uh, Pharisees. Ah, okay. Pharisees. Have you heard of the Pharisees? Yes, I'll write yes, it to yes, you yes. in the yes. uh, Skype chat. So there's yes. the Pharisees, and there's also the uh, Sadducees. So they were the other, let's say, uh, religious group um, at uh, the time of uh, Jesus. But they uh, had slightly different beliefs uh, and thoughts concerning uh, the spiritual di dimension. So the Pharisees believed everything in the Bible, but the Sadducees thought that certain things in the Bible were only like... Um, a metaphor, you see, just like a picture, an illustration, but they didn't believe it was true and it was exactly like that. And so they get, they asked Jesus the question, imagine if there's um, a woman who marries a man and uh, the uh, husband of this uh, wife dies, but... Uh, because this man uh, was one of seven brothers, and because the tradition, the Jewish tradition, is that if a man dies and he's married, then his brother, uh, if the brother is not married, should marry that woman and become a wife, I mean a husband as a substitute for the husband who's died, so as to give that woman a descendant, you see, to, to give her children. And so the Sadducees, you know, in this example that they told Jesus about, they said, and then the second man, second brother who had married this um, woman, died as well. And so the third brother married her, and he also died. And all the other brothers did the yes. same thing. They all seven married brothers, this, yes. seven brothers, seven husbands for this one woman, and all of them died. And then they asked Jesus the question, if, if, the, if heaven exists and if there is an afterlife and a resurrection and all these things that the Bible talks about, if it's true, then if this man goes to heaven... No, no, not him. If this woman goes to heaven and uh, these other seven brothers are there as well, whose wife will she be? Because uh, normally um, you can't be a wife of several different men. So, yes, but nobody, nobody wedding in the Exactly. Heaven. That's right. You know the answer. That's exactly what Jesus says. He says that um, first he but said, I don't understand when mm -hmm. I read this in, in Luke. Ah, you didn't understand I don't under that. Exactly. He, 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 um, this, uh, this was the second question that... I, really? This was yes, the second question yes, yes, you wanted yes. to ask? After, and the, yes, before uh, I after asked the first, you, before you, you read, yes. And then I, 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 I would Ooh, like... Well. To that's yeah. wonderful that I was able to proactively answer <laughs> your second question whilst answering your first question. That's what we call two in one, like answering two questions at the same time. Isn't that wonderful, uh, Giovanni? Yeah. That's another blessing of the Lord, you see. That's by the <laughs> grace of God. Yes, I thank the Lord for that. It's another miracle. A miracle is divine intervention. I mean, yes. I didn't know what the second question was, but God knew what it was because he exactly. knows everything. And he, even without me realizing it, made me answer your second question whilst answering your first question. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> Only God can do that, of course. And, of course, when we give the glory to God by speaking like I've just spoken, that's giving testimony to him, then... We benefit from his grace, from his goodness, from his protection, and we see his glory manifested, and everything goes well for us. Because if we're taking care of his business, which is to talk about him, 
he mm -hmm. takes care of our business, which is to look after us whilst we're here on earth, whilst awaiting to be with him in heaven. So we take care of God's business and he takes care of us and our business, which if our business is God's I, business, then... I hope. Yes, we hope and we pray and we know for certainty, we know that we know that we know that we know because we have God's promise, we have his assurance. So we're sure about it, 100%. It's written in the Bible and the Bible is a truth. Yes. So if we believe the Bible, we believe what is true, then if it's the truth, it has to happen. You see, it's 100% definite and sure yes. that it will happen. And so continuing this um, yes. example that the Sadducees were talking to Jesus about, Jesus said, y y you don't understand these things about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Um, in heaven, uh, it's not like on earth, says Jesus. In heaven, there won't be... Uh, giving in marriage and uh, taking a person to, to marry them. No, uh, people won't be married in heaven. I mean, of course, apart from the marriage of the Lamb, but that's different, you see. That's yeah. uh, special. That's the only marriage that will take place is between Jesus and the church. But there won't actually be any marriages between individual people. Uh, so uh, there won't be... Uh, the same kind of marriages as we have here on earth, because we will already be all united together uh, in the church, and we will be like one body, the body of Christ, and we will represent the bride of Christ, who Christ will then unite with, to, in a spiritual sense, that will be in relationship with, a spiritual relationship. Yes. Now, then... Jesus, just to confirm that even more, added that we will be like the angels. Of course, as it says in Hebrews, we are actually superior to the angels because um, we are actually the children of God and the, the angels are not called the children of God. So we actually have a position, a title which is superior to the angels but in a sense, when we're in heaven, we will have spiritual bodies which will be like the angels. And as I understand it, uh, because there won't be any physical relationship, then we won't have physical um, reproductive organs. You see, we won't have um, uh, physical um, love relationship organs. So... Uh, I believe, if I've understood this correctly, that angels, I mean, they were not like, um, they don't have uh, these physical uh, reproductive organs. And so uh, in heaven, we won't have all these things which we use on earth in order to um, produce uh, children, to give birth to children, to make the woman pregnant, etc., we, we won't have th those parts uh, of our bodies. We will be completely united as one. And in a, in a sense, if you think about it, if you are united as one, if a man and a woman are like united in a sense that spiritually they are only one body, well, if we think about it, the part that's missing from the woman, yes. which the man has, will um, fill that like empty space of the woman. And then the man will have whatever extra part he has, will be absorbed by that empty space of the woman. And in fact... If you take something which is extra, which is plus, plus one, and if you take something which is negative, like which is lacking, like okay. where there's, you know, 
an empty space. And that's like minus one. And if we put plus one and minus one together, what do you have? Plus one and minus one. If you put together the thing, two things together, we're talking mathematics here, arithmetic. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Plus uh, one joined with minus one. Well, the plus one and the minus one, they cancel out. And yes. it becomes like zero. Yes. So there's nothing there. So there won't be any uh, physical reproductive organs. There'll be nothing there. It'll just be um, covered with an ordinary... Uh, uh, with skin or whatever covering, but there won't either be any extra parts coming out or any, let's say, empty space going in because one fills the other. And when you fill okay. a hole, then there's nothing visible. It's just uh, a plain surface, if you see yes, what I mean. But, it's but, just but, a level surface, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You're saying so? In this case of the look of uh, one woman and seven yes, men. Yes, the, the one woman and seven men. Well, the, the answer Jesus was giving, giving was that um, because they're all joined together, okay, then in fact, in this case, uh, it wouldn't be um, those seven men who would be the seven husbands of this woman and this woman would be wouldn't be the wife of seven husbands because there are no such things as husbands and wives in heaven because there's no marriage in heaven so okay. we are all like children of god we're all brothers and sisters in christ we are all like a spiritual family but we are all united together in a sense that we are all one. And it is difficult to understand this because obviously yeah. we are more familiar with uh, physical laws, physical um, phenomena, and uh, we have difficulty understanding the spiritual concepts and truths and laws because we're still on earth, we're not yet in heaven, and so we haven't experimented these things, we haven't experienced these things, and so it is difficult to understand. It is a mystery, but at least I'm beginning to understand in the sense that um, we will all be united. That's why I talk about the united kingdom of heaven, because there's been nothing but unity in heaven. There won't be any division. So when people ask me, what is my nationality? I say to them, well, I'm a, a citizen of the United Kingdom. That's because I'm British. That's my earthly identity. Yeah. And then I continue the United Kingdom of heaven. Okay. Because... In heaven, it's a kingdom, because it's the kingdom of God. It's yes. united, because there's no division in heaven. And that is my spiritual identity, being a citizen of the united kingdom of heaven. Okay. Do you, so, do you see? Do you uh, see yes, yes. Uh, yes, a little bit, I understand. Because you understand a little bit, yes. The, the eight persons uh, became one spirit. Yes, that's right. The seven brothers and the and the woman, they all became like one spirit, like one being, one spiritual being, you see. And okay. in that sense, they were all united together. But I, I believe that we'll, all of us, even though we're united together in one, uh, that we will still have um, individual conscience. Now, it's difficult to understand because if already a husband and a wife are no longer two bodies but one spiritual body, but it'll be one spiritual body but with more than one conscience. That is to say, uh, the male part of this like new uh, combined body 
will be able to have his own thoughts and the female part of this combined body, she will also be able to have her own th thoughts. So I believe that we will still retain and keep our own conscience and consciousness of things. So we still have our own mind, our own thoughts, but as far as the body is concerned, spiritually, it'll all be united together. And if we all united together, how can there be any division? <laughs> because we can't really be divided against ourselves. Well, some people think they are divided against themselves. <laughs> but um, in heaven, uh, one person cannot be divided against themselves. You're, usually, we tend to be in agreement with ourselves. You see what I mean? Uh, uh, have you ever had an argument with yourself? It's difficult to have an argument with yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really difficult. <laughs> Very difficult. And in heaven, because heaven is perfect, well, obviously, we won't have any arguments because arguments, uh, that's not part of perfection. Division is not part of perfection. But unity and uh, total agreement uh, where everybody agrees and is united and uh, basically all going in the same direction, doing the same thing and all happy together. And, uh, you know, that, that for me is like paradise. That for me is like heaven. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good, doesn't it? <laughs> we, we can only dream of that down here on earth. <laughs> At the moment, it's only a dream, but uh, that dream will come true when we'll be in heaven. <laughs> yes, absolutely, Giovanni. <laughs> okay. Well, I see that um, we've uh, taken up uh, our time uh, concerning the talking about the Bible, but that's good because yes. um, obviously, as I also teach uh, biblical English, and uh, uh, it's exactly the same for me, the same conditions uh, when I'm teaching biblical English or. RLS and RPS for me, therefore, um, I can teach and I can talk about one or the other or both. Um, and it's exactly the same for me. So that's fine. And of course, I always have a preference for the Bible, you know, because uh, it's my passion. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> you know I that. see. You've noticed that. <laughs> you see that. Yes, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so I've really enjoyed this lesson. It's been really interesting, uh, Giovanni. Tell me, how did you find it? Was it helpful, useful, interesting for you? Did you yeah, learn yeah. some new things? It's very interesting, but it's uh, uh -huh. also very, um, very difficult to, to understand. understand. Yeah, I because I, I read this, uh, this uh, paragraph. Mm -hmm. of Luke uh, many times but yes. I don't I don't understand very well but and do you do you understand it a little bit uh, better yes, little, now a little now. bit I understand this. yes ah well that's uh, good then if you've understood the, the key to read yes. I think is the, the spiritual read the that's spiritual right meaning. exactly it's the um, the way that you see things, that's what's important. If you can see things from a spiritual point of view, because it's another dimension, and you're able to, as we say in English, wrap your mind around it. If you're able to grasp it, to seize it in your mind, then you can understand things so much better. Yes. But for that, it requires a bit of mental gymnastic, gymnastics, yeah. you see. You, you, you have to, in a way, uh, change the thinking of your mind to see things in a spiritual way, like, you know, with spiritual eyes or spiritual, you know, way of seeing things. But that's what Jesus encourages us to do. He, he wants us to see things in a spiritual way. And all of his parables, all the examples he gave, the stories, the teachings, all of that is to open up our eyes spiritually to spiritual truths and spiritual laws 
and the spiritual things of the kingdom of God so that we can be better prepared for heaven, yes. for the spiritual life in heaven. Yes. You, you, you see what I mean, uh, Giovanni? Yes, you understand yes, that? I see. It's difficult, but uh, I, I, I understand. Well, that's good that you understand that, even though it's difficult. So you've done very well then, Giovanni. So I'd just like to uh, congratulate you on your understanding, your your patience, uh, your motivation, uh, and your hunger and thirst for wanting to know more. And uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that this has blessed you. It's been a blessing for me as well. So you, I'm glad you've enjoyed the lesson as much as I have, uh, Giovanni. Yes. Yes, because we speak uh, of uh, God. That's of right. Bible. And when we talk about the Bible, we are always blessed. That is one of God's promises, that his word never goes out in vain. It always accomplishes what it has been sent out to do. And so we are always blessed because it is a book of blessings. It is a word of blessings. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Full of blessings. <laughs> Perfect. That's great. So, thanks ever so much once again, Giovanni. And I look forward then to our uh, next lesson together okay. next time. The, que the question for the next lesson remains uh, for the um, English uh, simulation. The train oh, yes, station. that's right. Okay. You did send me... Uh, I, don't, I don't send uh, another question. No, please. no, okay. you don't need to send anything okay. else. Uh, that can be uh, used uh, next time in our next okay. lesson. Okay, that's perfect. Great. Okay, Thanks. Lovely. All the best. All the best for you too, Giovanni, by grace, and may the Lord continue to bless you ever so abundantly in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks. Thanks a lot to you too. Take care. Cheers. Take care. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye, Giovanni. Bye.